guys, do you think this rubber ducky is gonna sink or float? I think it's gonna float. Whoa, it's floating. Whee! Good job, Ryan. Now, what about this mallet? Whoa. Do you think it's gonna sink or float? I think it's going to sink. Let's see. It sank. Good job. But mommy, why do you think sink or float? Good question, Ryan. I'll show you. Come on, guys. Where'd mommy go? Did you know an object's ability to sink or float is called buoyancy? But why does an object sink or float? Object will sink if they're more dense than water. An object will float if they're less dense than water. So, let's try putting these objects in water to see which one will sink and which one will float. Let's see what we have here. Squishy, some diamond jewels, and a basketball. I just get that back. Come back. This squishy toy feels light, but let's see if it'll float in water. All right. One, two, three. <gasps> wow! The squishy toy float in water. So what does that mean? It's less dense than water. Yay! Woohoo! Okay, let's see what we have next. Next, we have these stones. So colorful. Woohoo! Ah! Right. They're smaller than the squishy toys. Do you guys think it'll float in water? But they're heavier. Does that make a difference? <gasps> Let's see. One, two, three. Oh no! <gasps> wow, so what does this mean? These stones are more dense than water. Look, they sink all the way to the bottom. Next, we have a basketball. Look, it bounces. It's, uh, it's heavier than the squishy toy. It is bigger than the squishy toy. Do you guys think this will float or sink in water? All right, let's test it out. One, two, three. Whew. Whoa, what did you guys notice? It floats in water. What does that mean? It's less dense than water even though it's bigger and heavier than the squishy toy. They both float! So why does the basketball float? Well, it's hollow and empty inside, and it's full of air. And air is less dense than water, so it helps the basketball float! woo I have an idea, let's go grab a whole bunch of other stuff to try. Be right back! Whoa. whole bunch of stuff for us to try, okay? So remember, an object will sink if the density is greater than water, and an object will float if the density is less than water. So let's see. Mr. Shark, you wanna give it a try? It's not a real shark, it's a toy shark. Sink or float, let's see. Are you greater than water for density or less? Wow! Must have a lot of air inside. Do you guys remember these? Fidget spinners! Sink or float? Let's test it out. One, two, three. <gasps> they sink! <gasps> so what does that mean? The density of fidget spinner is greater than water. Next, scissors. So this is a plastic scissor, but we're gonna see if it sinks or float in water. You ready? One, two, three. <gasps> it floats. Did you guys guess that right? So these are less dense than water. Okay. Whoopee cushion. Okay. All right. Sink or float? What do you guys think? One, two, three. Oh. Also floats. Who likes to play American football? Hot, hot, pew! Sink or 
float. One, two, three. <laughs> Sorry, I'll be right back. <laughs> Obviously, no, not good at American football. One, two, three. Hot, hot catch. Yay! Also float. Wow. So far, we're doing great. But here's a tricky one. Paper clip. Sink or float. One, two, three. Move away, Whoopi Cushion. Whee! So what's happening? <gasps> they all sink. That means the paper clip's density is greater than water. Okay, what's next? This is so fun. What about the giant glasses? These sink or float. Any guesses? All right, bye-bye glasses. One, two, three. Oh, is it gonna sink or is it gonna float? Oh, it's hovering, it's hovering. Oh, what do you guys think? I think it's pretty close to water's density. That's why it's right there in between sinking and floating. So, since you guys didn't ask, what is the density of water? It is, the density of water is one gram per milliliter. So anytime an object's density is greater than one gram per milliliter, it sinks. Anytime an object's density is less than one gram per milliliter, it floats. Um, what else? Trumpet! Sink or float. Don't forget, there's lots of air inside here, lots of holes. And it's pretty plasticky. One, two, three. Fall out. <sighs> All right. Lobster, you guys like lobster? Hey, Mr. Lobster, do you sink or float in water? Well, I am a lobster, so I think I'm going to sink. Oh, okay. Let's see if it's true. He thinks he's gonna sink. What do you guys think? One, two, three. water, huh? So what does that mean? The density is greater than water! <gasps> okay, we're gonna clear out the tank because I have a super fun experiment! Diet Coke versus regular Coke. Which one will sink and which one will stay afloat? All right, let's put it into the water. Okay guys, we have to wait. Okay, something cool is gonna happen. <gasps> wow, look what you guys noticed. That Diet Coke float and that regular Coke sink. So what does this mean? The Diet Coke is less dense than water. But the regular Coke, oh, where are you regular Coke? There you are. It's more dense than water. Do you know why? Because this actually has lots and lots and lots of sugar inside. So the sugar is more dense than water, so it sink the Coke. And the Diet Coke actually has less than one gram of sugar, so mostly just water and air inside, so it floats. Wow! Excuse me, Miss Ryan's mom. Yes, Peck. I'm doing some homework on buoyancy, and I'm trying to understand how these giant cruise ships are able to float in the ocean. That's a good question, Peck. Those cruise ships can float in water because it's hollow, like this basketball. It's full of air. <laughs> it's hollow and full of air. Got it. But that's not all, Peck. It's because also the shape of the cruise ship. <gasps> I have an idea. Let's do one more experiment. Oh joy, another experiment? I love experiments. <laughs> Let's go. Did you know that ship is shaped so that most of it is above water? That way it doesn't displace too much water. Displace? Yeah. <gasps> Let's try this. I'm going to put ice, oh it's cold, in this cup that it's full of water and see what happens. You guys ready? Oh, it's so cold. Okay. Whoa. Whoa! The 
water spilled everywhere. Yeah, so when we put the ice in a cup of water that's already filled, the water spills out, right? So when an object pushes water out of the way, this is called displacement. Yeah, so this is why ship don't sink. They are hollow like the basketball and full of air and they're shaped so that they don't displace too much water. That's right! Oh joy, I can finish my homework now. Thank you, Miss Ryan's mom. See you later. You're welcome, Peg. Bye! So, I think that now we're an expert on objects sinking or floating in water. <gasps> Let's try a pop quiz. Let's go. Question number one. <gasps> what is buoyancy? Is it A, an object's ability to sink or float? Or is it B, buoyancy? Boy ant. <laughs> or is it C? Is buoyancy a cheeseburger? Mm. Any guesses? <gasps> the answer is A. Buoyancy is an object's ability to sink or float. Yay! All right, guys, let's move on to question number two. Why does object sink? Is it because A, they're blue, all object that is blue float, or is it B, they like to swim? Or is it C, they are more dense than water? So what's the answer? Why do objects sink? It's because C, they are more dense than water. Question number three. Why do ships float? Is it because A, they're hollow, full of air, and the shape doesn't place too much water? Or is it because B, they're made of squishy fruit? Or is it because of C, they're hungry? Do you know the answer? Why do ships float? It's because of A, ships float because they're hollow, full of air, and their shape doesn't displace too much water. So, how did you guys do on the quiz? And I guess we tried, you can try again next time. And now that we learned so much about how objects are able to sink and float into water, tell Bob all about it. And let's go. So, Ryan, that's why some things sink and some things float. Thank you for showing me all about what sinks and floats, Mommy. Of course. Now, final question for you, Ryan. <gasps> will this ball sink or float? It will float. Okay, let's see if Ryan's right. Yay! Good job. Now, does that mean this ball is less dense than water? or more dense than water. Less dense. Yay! <laughs> Why is mommy crying, guys? <laughs> mommy, <laughs> why are you crying? The onion, the onion is, is making me cry. Why do onions make you cry? Good question. Be right back, I'll answer it for you. Let's go. <laughs> Where did mommy go? Did you know that babies only blink about two times per minute? That's a long time without blinking. But babies, they also cry a lot, so they don't need to replenish their tears as fast as you and me. It's okay, Jack Jack. Oh, Did you know that our eyes produce three different types of tears? The first one is called emotional tears. <laughs> It's okay, Jack Jack, don't be sad. I'm right here. When babies are sad, they cry, just like Jack Jack do. But you can also have other emotional tears, like happy tears. Like when it's your birthday and you open a present and it's a puppy. Oh, I'm so happy I can cry. <laughs> 
Sean, are you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm okay. I'm <laughs> just so happy. Here's oh. a tissue. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Don't worry, these are happy tears. Oh yeah, this is a happy, happy. I'm very happy. <laughs> happy birthday. The second type of tears are reflex tears. Reflex tears protect your eyes from irritant in the air. Just like how goggles protect your eyes. Have you guys ever cut open an onion? Does it make you cry? <laughs> oh, oh, don't worry, I'm just cutting an onion. The onion releases irritant that goes in the air and the eyes produce reflex tears to protect itself. Oh, oh. Our third types of tears are called basal tears. We always have basal tears in our eyes so they can make sure that our eyes don't dry out. Our body produces between five to 10 ounces of basal tears per day. So it's between this much, five ounce. Look, this is what it would look like. Whoa. And the 10 ounce. Whoa. So this is five ounce of basal tears, and this is 10 ounce of basal tears. That's a lot of tears to produce every day. Wow, we learn so much about all the different type of tears we have. Now it's time for a quiz. Question number one. Why do we have tears? Is it because A, our three kinds of tears shows emotion, protects our eyes, and prevents our eyes from drying out? Is it B, they were leftovers for when we were a baby. Oh, it's okay. Or is because C, we drink water. So why do we have tears? It's because to help us show emotion, protects our eyes, and preventing them from drying out. Question number two. How many kinds of tears do we have? Is it A, three tears? B, a hundred tears? Or C, a million different type of tears? The answer is A, we have three different types of tears. Emotional tears, reflex tears, and basal tears. Question number three. When you cut an onion, what tears does that produce? Is it A, Funny tears. <laughs> is it B, purple tears? Or is it C, reflex tears? The answer is C, reflex tears. Great job! Did you guys get the answer right? If you didn't, it's okay. You can try again next time. For now, let's go back and tell Ryan all about tears. Okay, let's go. Woo! Boss Baby, stop crying. You keep crying. It's okay, Boss Baby. So, Ryan, that is why you cry. Oh, okay, but why is Boss Baby crying? Oh, no, maybe he needs something like a nap. Oh, okay. There, there, Boss Baby. There, there. Bye-bye. Yay, he stopped crying. Yay. Thank you for watching our Why Do We Cry video. Hey, guys, today I'm helping my parents clean and putting all of this in the trash. Wait! What? Ryan, those are recyclables! Really? Yes! Oh yeah! So paper goes in a paper bag, and plastics go in a plastic bag. Job. But mommy, I know it's good to recycle, but what other things can we do to save our planet? <gasps> good idea, Ryan. I'll show you. I'll be right back, you guys. Did you know wild rainforests are tall, dense jungles with half of the world's plants and animals? And ice caps are huge glaciers of ice that holds 93% of fresh water here on Earth. Wild rainforests and ice caps are essential to planet Earth. And they're in big, big trouble. There are over 
30 million species of plants and animals in the wild rainforest. <gasps> Yay, we're in the rainforest. And look, there are animals like fish and birds and orangutans that help spread pollens all around the rainforest so that pollen can produce all kinds of plants. And these rainforests have 70% of the plants that we use in medicine. Phew, that's a lot of really important reasons why we need the rainforest. But did you know there are only 28% of wild forests left globally right now? So if we don't help out, the rainforest might disappear. Bye-bye, <gasps> rainforest. No, we don't want that, right? So what will happen if we let the rainforest disappear? Number one, the animals can't pollinate the plants. So that means we will have no more plants? Number two, then the plants wouldn't exist. Bye-bye, plants. Number three, then we wouldn't have plants to make our medicine. Oh no, what could we do to help? <gasps> I know, one thing that we can do is build a home for animals that are migrating. Come on! So if you put a birdhouse like this one here, it will be a great help for birds who are migrating. We can help them get to where they need to go next and it will make their job easier traveling and pollinating the plants. Oh, look. Hi. We also need the rainforest to help us stop the ice cap from melting. Rainforests are full of trees that clean our air by converting carbon dioxide, which is what we breathe out, into oxygen, which is what we need to breathe. And if we have too much carbon dioxide in the air, the temperature of the planet will rise. Look, oh, it's getting hot. And if the temperature of the planet rise, the ice cap will melt into the ocean. And then the ocean level will rise. Oh no, the water is rising. Oh, let's get out. So what will happen if we let the ice cap melt? Number one, water from the ice cap will drain into the ocean. Number two, the ocean level will rise. And number three, land around the coast and land at sea level will be covered. Whoa, that would be a lot of water. But don't worry, one of the things we can do is plant our own tree. <gasps> Let's go. So planting trees like this one helps both the ice cap and the rainforest. This tree over here will help convert carbon dioxide to oxygen, just like all the trees in the rainforest. It's something that everyone can do, even you. Thanks for helping me plant a tree. Now it's time for a pop quiz. Number one, how many species of plants and animals are there in the rainforest? Is it A, 30 million, is it B, five, or is it C, zero plants and animals in the rainforest? <gasps> Did you guess it? It is A, 30 million different plants and animals that are in the rainforest. That's a lot. Question number two, where do we get 70% of plants we use for medicine. Is it A, the rainforest? Is it B, the rainbow? Or is it C, ice? Did you guess it? It is A, the rainforest. 
That is where we get 70% of our plants that we use for medicine. Question number three. How do trees clean the air that's around us? Is it A, with hand soap? Is it B, with peanut butter? Oh, I love peanut butter, they're so yummy. Or is it C, by converting carbon dioxide into oxygen? Did you get the right answer? It is C. Trees help clean air by converting carbon dioxide, which is what we breathe out, which is the stuff that's not really good for our body, into oxygen, which is what we need to breathe in to our body to survive. Congratulations, good job! And if you didn't guess it all right, you can try again next time. So now that we learned so much about ways to save the planet, Let's go back and tell Ryan. Let's go. I hope you guys learned a lot of ways to save the planet. Bye. Remember, always oh, stay happy and rise up. Bye. I'm going to go save the planet more. Hey, guys, let's jam together. Uh -oh. What happened? It's on, but it's not working. Is it broken? Oh no, what do I do? How am I going to jam to music now? Peck? Salutations, Ryan. Hi, Peck. What's wrong? My guitar broke and I can't jam to music. Did you know that you can make musical instruments using everyday household items? You can? Yeah. Why don't you look around and see what you can make? Then let's have a jamming party. Okay. Mmm, making some beans for a birthday party. Can make a lot. There's a lot of people coming in. Ooh, okay. One more can. Daddy, I have a great idea. What? I can use those cans to make a homemade drum. That's a great idea, Ryan. I'll help you. Thank you. Okay guys, we gathered a bunch of other things that we need to make the drum. All right, so we gather balloons, very colorful, and a lot of different colored duct tapes, and stickers to decorate the drums. Yeah, and we also got light up chopsticks, <coughs> so we can use it as the drumsticks. First, we're gonna use the balloons to cover the drums. That's right, Ryan, what color of the balloons do you want? So many colors. I want gold. The golden it is. All right, what's the next color? I want purple. Purple it is. All right, so we chose these two colors. Now, you have to cut out the balloon so it will fit over this uh, container. Oh, this looks like a swimming head cap, right? Yeah. You can also use rubber bands to hold the balloon in place. See, now it looks like drums. And now for the other drum. All right, it's a special one. It's golden. Mm. All right. It's done. Now we're gonna cut off the extra balloon pieces. Next, we're going to put tape around the Decoration. All right. You have to go all around. Ryan, can you just turn, 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 turn? Turn, 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 turn. Good job, good job. Now let's finish the rest. And the next thing we're going to decorate with is stickers. Okay, put it right here. Put it right here. Smaller version like this. Come on, let's go. 
and let's show Peck. Right, let's go. Oh, just Whoa. something about it. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> hey Peck, wait a second. If you're here, does that mean that Ryan sent us a new project? That's right, we gotta make some musical instruments. Musical instruments, oh man, that sounds like so much fun. I bet we could find things around the house to make them with. Let's find some things and rattle, make noise and do other fun stuff. Yeah, no, that sounds great Peck, uh, but we should we should probably get going. Like an instrument that uses strings? But we, we can go find these things. How about one that you have to blow into? Which will make it a win and I think I'm, I'm just gonna go, oh okay? Oh gosh! Where did Brie go? I gotta go get supplies too! Whoa! Whoa! Oh, <laughs> man, what a hard day of work. It's time for my snack. And it's Cheez Its! Here we go. Cheez Its all over my plate. Now, to eat this with my trusty spoon! Ooh, a plate! <laughs> Wait! What happened? Where's my Cheez-Its? I can use that too. Oh no, where'd my spoon go? Oh well, at least I still have my long grain and rich rice. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> where'd my rice go? So while Peck is doing whatever it is that he's doing, I know the perfect place to start. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, we have this whole shelf full of all sorts of arts and crafts and things like that. There has to be some good stuff in here. So let's see. <gasps> Oh, first of all, we need tape, and this is so bright and fun. Okay, maybe we could use some rubber bands. I mean, you can do anything with rubber bands. Let's get all of those. Definitely some colorful paper. I think that's a great idea. <laughs> and, ooh, I wonder what's in here. <gasps> oh, look how pretty and sparkly everything is. I don't know what we're gonna use this for, but we're definitely taking this with us. <gasps> Jingle bells. That's pretty much an instrument already. Eggs? I don't think somebody put this back in the right spot, but I think we could use these too. What else do we have? Wait a second, thumbtacks. Well, they're bright and colorful. I think we can use those too. The last thing we need, I know what, wrapping paper. This is perfect, I have everything I need. I wonder what Peck is doing. What do we have here? Yarn! Huh? I can use that! that? Yeah! Oh. <laughs> mm. oh, that's so silly! <laughs> Yoo hoo hoo! Woo! <laughs> Just gonna borrow this toilet paper roll. And there we go! <laughs> yeah! Oh, hey, Peck! Wait! Where's all the toilet paper? Sorry, Daniel! Peck! It's the world's tiniest instrument! Oh, hey, come <laughs> Peck? I found some things that we can use for instruments. Yippee! A toilet paper roll? <laughs> what if you started with a tambourine? One of my favorite percussion instruments. That's a great idea, Peck, and it looks like we have everything we need. For starters, we can use this plate to be the base, but it's kind of white and plain, so we can paint it, maybe some bright, pretty colors. I don't know how that's gonna work, but I believe in you, Brie. <laughs> oh, I have the perfect idea. What is more colorful than a rainbow? So we need all the colors of the rainbow, which is Roy G. Biv. So it starts with red and then orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and... Violet! Violet, of course. I kind of forgot your color, Peck, sorry. <laughs> Whoa, looks like a rainbow now, cool. So the next thing we need to do is try to fold this up like a taco. So we have only half a plate. We have a rainbow. Let's see if we can make it work. <gasps> Look at that. We have a rainbow. <gasps> wow. Now I think we need to glue it together. All the glue. We need lots of glue for this because this has got to hold tight. Three, two, one. And we're smashing it together. Ooh, it's a little hot. <laughs> this is why you need an adult for help, okay? Because hot glue can get really hot. There we go, look at that taco. Nom, nom, nom. All right, hole puncher. We need one hole for every jingle bell. And last one. Ah, that was a lot of work. Now we're ready for the jingle bells. We put each bell on a string. Now we're just gonna take the string and tie it to each one of these little holes like that. Ta-da! 
and done. Now once you have them all tied up, guess what you have? A tambourine. Cool. Now let's make some maracas, yeah. <laughs> okay, so for maracas, we can use these eggs that we found, some spoons, and we can use your long grain enriched rice peck. Of course, the long grain enriched rice. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put some rice in these eggs. I think I'm gonna make a mess, but it's okay. That's part of crafting. So we need some rice to make some noises. Whoa! Okay, I'm making a lot of mess. There we go. Now we're gonna put the lids on and see if it sounds. <gasps> oh, that's so cool. All right, number two. Now we need to make sure these don't open so we don't get rice everywhere. So maybe we should use some tape. Whoa, seal it up nice and tight. That ought to be good and sturdy. Sounds good to me. All right. So now we're gonna glue the spoons like this to make a handle. You gotta be careful with the hot glue. And, ooh, there we go. Handle number one, handle number two. All right. There we go. Next, we're gonna tape it up and then decorate. All right, taping, 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 taping. Ooh, perfect. Last wrap and done with that. I think we could use some decorations though. I mean, they have to be festive, right Peck? Yeah. Time for the fun tape. Oh, it's so cute. Look at all those bright colors. Super dun, dun. festive. There we go. Ooh, maracas, spectacular. <laughs> yes, I mean the festive tape is definitely what made the maracas, so listen to that. Okay, well, next we can use the toilet paper roll for something. You know what, Peck? I actually have an idea for the toilet paper roll, but it's gonna be a surprise, so you're just gonna have to wait and see what it is. We're gonna start with this super shiny sparkly tape. Okay, so just because we don't want it to look like something that came from the bathroom, we're gonna wrap it in this super shiny tape. Ooh, that's so pretty. All right, let's cover this other end. There we go. We're gonna take the tissue paper, crinkle, 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 and put it on the edge of this with a rubber band. Scroll, scroll. Ready? Dun, dun. The science of rubber banding things together. Super technical. There you go. Well, now we can't really see our kazoo, so maybe we should trim this up some. Oh, that looks so much better. Now we can actually see our kazoo. Da, 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 da. Oh, da. We're catching a little bit of air here, so I think I have the perfect thing to help us out. We just need to make a little air hole. Oops, backwards. Pink. Let's see if that works. It works so good. Since this is already shiny, and we have these shiny jewels, why not just decorate it a little bit? You know, for some extra credit. We got all our jewels on. Pack, what's next? The last one will be tricky, the guitar. Ooh, I have the perfect body for that guitar. What about this? That'll work. <laughs> so we're gonna start with the neck of the guitar, which we can actually use the wrapping paper roll that we found. Uh, this is a little long, so we're definitely gonna have to shorten it. And then we have our body, which is this box. We have strings to pluck and play with. And I think we even have little tuning knobs that we can use. Yeah! Hi! Ah, perfect length. What a coincidence. So now we just need to cut a hole so we can stick this guy through it. Bing! Perfect hole. So we're gonna use these pieces of cardboard as string holders to hold our strings on in place. Ooh. All right. While we're waiting for the glue to dry right here, which this is what's gonna hold our strings in place, let's put some little tuning knobs. Of course they're not gonna work, but I think it'll really help it look like a guitar. So we need six of them total. One, two, three. Awesome. And then the other side. There we go. That way is when it goes out of tune, you can just tune it up. It's just like that. So we sealed up the ends, that way you can't get poked by any of the thumbtacks. And now I think we're just ready for the strings. All we have to do is put the strings 
on the guitar very carefully. Make sure we don't pop any. There's five. And our final string, string number six. You wanna see how it plays? You recognize that song, right? Twinkle, twinkle, oh. little star. Whoa. Well, look, Ryan, this tambourine also make a noise. Whoa. Let's jam! Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear. Stop buddy. Somebody out there. Happy, Happy birthday. I have two hands. You do too. I have two hands. You do too. I have two hands. I forgot the rest. Thank you for watching our do it yourself instrument video. Hey guys, I'm going to play soccer with myself. It's not moving very much. Hmm, let me try again. Yeah, it's definitely not moving very much. Mommy! What is it, Ryan? Can you help me kick the ball? Sure, let's do it. Okay. All right, three, two, one. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Yeah, we put yeah. the ball in motion! Woohoo! Wait. Wait, Mommy, what's motion? Motion means moving. Together, we put enough force to move the ball. But what is force? A force is a push or a pull. You know what? I'll show you guys. Come on. Wait. Huh? Where'd you go? So, when we say something that is in motion, that means it's moving. So for example, I'm in motion, see? Motion. And jumping is motion. I'm moving. Here, Gus and Alpha are playing tag. They are in motion. That means they're moving. When Ryan is sliding down the slide, he is in motion. He's moving. When Emma and Kate are on the swing, they are in motion. They are moving. When Ryan is playing bowling, the ball is in motion. The ball is moving. Nice, that was good. When birds are flying in the sky, they are in motion. The birds are moving. When a fish is swimming, it's in motion. The fish is moving. When Daddy fell into the pool, Hey, Sean! He is also in motion. Uh-oh. So, if motion means moving, something that is not in motion means it's at rest. Here, books are on a desk. They are at rest. Here, Combo is sleeping. He's at rest. Now, Ryan paws Daddy. So Daddy is not moving. That means Daddy is at rest. Why Daddy, you're going so slow. Here, rocks are just sitting outside. They are at rest, not in motion. So class. What's the difference between an object in motion and an object not in motion? Anyone? Uh, Anyone? Uh, Ooh, me, me. Combo? Oh, here. Uh, here. Uh, Gil? Me, me, me. I my Alpha? Oh, 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 oh. Gus? Hey, me, me, me. Peck? You look like you have your hand up. Force! That's right! Good job, Peck! It is force! A force is a push or a pull. For example, here, Daddy and Ryan both use force, a push, to move the giant ball. Here, Ryan uses force, a push, to knock down the dominoes. One, two, three. Ah! Waffles, you guys.
Daddy uses force to pull on the wagon to take Ryan, Emma, and Kate for a ride. Daddy also uses force, a push of the ball, to hit the target. And Ryan went into the water. Here, Emma and Kate both use force to push and pull each other up and down the seesaw. When you kick the ball, you place force on the ball, which makes it move. Let's look. Okay. Here it is, a little force. Pew! The amount of force you place on the ball makes a difference. Watch. Okay, here's the ball. I'm gonna use greater force. You guys ready? Say, yeah! Since I put more force on the green ball, it went further than the red ball. Look! A rubber band is also a good example of force. When you pull on a rubber band, force that you pull will come back at you. But be careful not to use too much force. Using force, let's make a slingshot using a rubber band. First, fold the small paper like this. Then fold the paper on top of the rubber band. Pull with enough force to launch the rocket and knock down the goal. Score. So let's recap. An object could be in motion or it could be at rest. Using force, which is a push or a pull, you can put an object that was at rest in motion. Combo uses a force of one, while Alpha Lexa uses a force of three. Which way will the box move? That's right, towards combo. The greater force will put the box in motion. Let's try another example. Gus and Combo are playing tug of war. Gus pulls with the force of two. Combo also pulls with the force of two. Since they both pull with the same amount of force, the object will not move will remain at rest. Greater or stronger force may cause faster motion. Look, I'm putting a lot of force. <gasps> Whoa, look at it go. This means that force does not always cause movement. Balanced forces does not cause motion. Now that you know all about force and motion, it's time for a quiz. Question number one. Which one of these is an example of motion? Combo Panda skateboarding. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, Combo Bunga, I did it. Woohoo! A ball sitting outside, a cup on top of a table. That's right, the answer is A, Combo Panda Skateboarding. He was in motion. That means he is moving. Whoa! Ah! Question number two. What is the word that means a push or a pull? Is it A, peekaboo? Or is it B, force? Or is it C, spaghetti? Did you get it? It is B, force. A force means that it's a push or a pull. Question number three. If Robo Combo pushes a box with the force of two, and Combo pushes the box in the opposite direction, but with a force of five. Which way will the box move? That's right, towards Robo Combo, because Combo's force is greater. Okay, so now we learned all about forces and motion. Let's 
Let's go back and tell Ryan. Let's go. Okay, guys, I'm gonna bowl. So, Ryan, that's everything you need to know about force and motion. Yeah, I'm gonna use my force right now. And I'm gonna put this ball in motion. Strike! Thank you for watching. Hey, guys, watch this cool magic trick I learned. Whoa, it's so cool, isn't it? But why does this happen? Mommy! Oh, hey, Ryan, what's wrong? Why is the magnet sticking to the iron filing? <gasps> oh, that's really cool because it sticks because of this thing called magnetism. Get it? Magnetism? Huh? What, what's that? I'll explain it to you. Come on. Okay. Magnetism is the force that attracts magnetic objects like iron. Let's take a look. Here I have some iron fillings. Here we have a magnet. Look. Oh, see how it attracts the iron? Oh, that looks super cool. This is a giant magnet. A magnet is just a piece of rock or a metal that will attract objects that has a strong magnetic force. Take a look. Here, we have some nails. You ready? Whoa. This one. Look at this. The nail is made out of steel, which has iron in it. The attraction is so strong that it so hard for it to even come off. Look at this, whoa. This is a hammer. It's also attracted to magnet. Well, watch, you ready? Put it down, okay, whoa. Guys, look, do not try this at home. Well, look how strong it is. Okay, I have to use all my force to pull this apart. Uh, wow, they really are attracted to each other. So, the big question is, does magnet stick to all objects? Let's find out. Okay, here we have a giant egg. Does a magnet, you think, will attract to the egg? Let's see. Oh, it does not. So, this egg is made out of plastic, so it does not attract to a magnet. What about this key? Will the magnet attract to the key? Let's see. Ah! So the magnet is not attracted to the actual key, but it does to the key ring. Look. Next, we have a pencil. Do they attract each other? Let's see. Ah, oh, it does not look. Not at all. What about this fork? You think the magnet is attracted to this fork? Let's see. <gasps> Whoa, it does! Look at this, that's so cool. Next, we have a feather. Oh, that tickles. Will they attract each other? Let's see. Ah, oh, it did not, it fell off, look. They do not attract each other. Next, we have a sponge. What do you think? Attract or not? <laughs> it did not. Okay, what about some paper clips? Let's see if the magnet will attract to the paper clip. Okay, it's ready. Whoa, look. They are attracted to each other. about some weight. Uh, my one pound weight. Are they attracted to each other? Let's see. Okay, so you can't really tell, but there is a weak attraction. But, what if we pull out the giant magnet and see? Whoa! The dumbbell is magnetic. Look at that. Yeah. So based on a fun experiment, we can see that magnets are only attracted to objects made out of metal. But not all metals. Magnets are only attracted to strong metals like iron, cobalt, and nickel. A magnet
and it will not stick to glass. It doesn't stick to paper either, look! No matter what color I pick. Magnet doesn't stick to wood either, look! It also doesn't stick to plastic either, see? Or anything else that doesn't have metal. But remember, magnet doesn't attract to all metal. Here is copper wire. It's not magnetic at all. Magnets only attract strong metals like iron, cobalt, nickel, and even steel. Look! So objects that are attracted to a magnet, like these, are called magnetic objects. And objects that do not attract to a magnet are called non-magnetic objects. All magnets have a magnetic field that you can't see. It's invisible to us. The magnetic field is like a force field. However, if a magnetic object is inside the magnetic field, it will pull objects towards the magnet. Look! Magnets have two poles. The north of the magnet, or the end pole, or the south pole of the magnet, or the S pole. The poles of the magnet is where the force is the strongest. Look, if I put it to the side, it doesn't pick up as much iron as if when I point to the pole. If you have two magnets and you put one end that is the north pole and the other end that is the south pole together, look what happened. They attract each other. But what do you think will happen if I put both ends that are north pole together? Oh no, they don't attract at all. Do you know what they're doing? Let's see, look. They're repelling one another. Then what happened if I do south and south? Do you do the same thing? It's trying to say, get away, get away from me. They also repel each other. So only opposites attract. If you have a north pole at one end, the other needs to be a south pole. See? If you cut a magnet in half, the two smaller magnets will also have a north and south pole. Did you know that the Earth is like one giant magnet? So it also have a north and south pole. Ever seen a compass like this? If you're lost in the woods or maybe in your backyard, you can use the compass to guide you. It will always point towards north, okay? All right, uh-huh, uh-huh, north is that way, so uh-huh. So my house is not north, so keep going. Opposite of north, uh-huh. Keep going. Oh, see, I knew a compass would help me. I'm home. Some compass has a needle that is usually made out of a strong magnetic metal like iron. The needle also have a north and south pole. It's made so the pointy part always points north to the north of the Earth's magnetic field. So magnets can look pretty cool and fun. Whoa. Magnets actually have real life application too. Look, the refrigerator door also uses magnet to help you open and close. Look. Here you see a junkyard crane using magnets to help move scrap steel, which contains iron from one place to another. So now that we learned some basic concepts about magnet, look. Let's take a quiz. Question number one. Which one of these three objects will be attracted to the magnet? Paper, hair clip, or a brush? What do you guys think? Did you get the answer? It will be paper clip, look. clip must be made out of metals that are attracted to the magnet. If I put one end of the magnet that is the south pole and another magnet 
that is the South Pole together, will they attract or repel one another? Let's see. Did you guys see the answer? They totally repel one another. Look, I can't even put them together. It has to be opposite attracts. If one end is a South Pole, the other one needs to be the North Pole. See? Question number three. What is the field around the magnet called? Is it A, a soccer field? Is it B, a fun field? Or is it called C, a magnetic field? Did you get it? The answer is C. The field around the magnet is called a magnetic field. But it's invisible, so we can't actually see it. Now that we've learned all about magnets, let's go find Ryan. Ryan, Ryan, where are you? Ryan, wait a minute. What is happening? How's the magnet moving by itself? <gasps> wait a minute. Thank you for learning magnets with us. Remember, always stay happy and rise up. Bye! Bye! Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> hey guys, I'm watering the plants today. This one needs some two. And this one. Oh no, it's raining! I guess the plants don't need me to water them anymore. Let's go inside! Ooh, that was close. But look, Mom made me some lunch. Wait a minute. How come we have to eat food, but the plants don't? How do they live? Mommy! What is it, Ryan? Plants make their own food, right? Yes, they do. But how? Let me explain it to you. Huh? Where'd you go? I thought you were going to explain. Plants like this one. And this one, and even this one, all makes their own food through a process called photosynthesis. Say it with me, photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. Again, photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is when green plants use light energy to make their own food. Photo means light and synthesis means put together. So photosynthesis means using light to put together to make their own food. Isn't that cool? Besides sunlight, plants also need water and a carbon dioxide gas that comes from the air. So let's recap. What are the three things plants need to survive? First, sunlight. Oh, it's so sunny today. What's number two? Water. Oh no, it's starting to rain. Oh, I think I got my umbrella. It's good for the plants. And number three, carbon dioxide gas. The same gas we use to breathe out. Plants need all three of these things to make their own food, which is called glucose. Stay with me. Glucose, which is just sugar, and they also give out oxygen, which is the gas that we need to survive. We breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. Plants are the opposite of us. They breathe in carbon dioxide and breathe out or releases oxygen. Plants breathe carbon dioxide from the air through their leaves. On the surface of the leaves are lots of tiny little pores called stomata. The carbon dioxide enters the leaves of the plants through the stomata. Plants have molecules called chlorophyll, and the chlorophyll is what absorbs in the sunlight. So, plants take in water, carbon dioxide, and it uses sunlight to make their own food. 
a sugar called, what is it called again? Glucose! Say it with me. Glucose. Glucose. And don't forget, it releases oxygen into the air. Do you guys notice how clean and pure the air feels when you're around plants? Plants releases oxygen into the air and we need oxygen to survive. Thank you, plants. So together, we should do everything that we can to protect all plants around us and here on Earth. That way, we'll have plenty of oxygen for us and the animals here to survive. Okay, so now that we've learned so much about photosynthesis, let's take a quiz. Question number one. How do plants make their own food? Is it A, by cooking? Or is it B, through a process called photosynthesis? Or is it C, by baking their own food? Did you get the answer right? It is B, photosynthesis. Plants use light energy to make their own food. Question number two. What are three basic things plants need to survive? Is it A, sunlight, pizza, and french fries? Or is it B, sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide? Or is it C, sunlight, bread, mm, and cheese. Did you get it? The answer is B. In order to survive, plants need three basic things, which is sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide. Question number three. What do plants breathe in through their stomata? Is it A, oxygen? B, perfume? Or is it C, carbon dioxide? Did you get the answer? That's right, the answer is C, carbon dioxide, yay! Now that we learned so much on how plants make their own food, photosynthesis, let's go and tell Ryan. That was a really good lunch. So, that's how plants make their own food. Yeah, through photosynthesis. Make more food! Thank you for watching. Remember, always stay happy and rise up. Bye! Bye.